perhaps the hardest hitting batsman of the modern era. He was the finest all-round fielder of his time. He appeared almost regal at the crease, but away from it, he was shy and reserved. A destroyer of even the finest fast bowling, Viv Richards is one of ESPN's legends of cricket. By the end of the series, it was the English team that was in need of mercy. Hammered away mercifully through the offside. Leading the assault was Vivian Richards. Well, that's short, that's it. And a tremendous performance is by Vivian Richards. 200 in the test match on this ground, following in the footsteps of the great Frank Worrell and Basil Butcher before him. The 76 West Indies England series began with the, the headlines the, all revolving around Greg's grovel comment. And Richards came out in the very first day of the series and batted most of the day, batting from number three, and finished the day at 143 not out, and went on the next day to score 232. And you could not have imagined a more effective way to push Tony Gregg's words back straight down his throat. And a superb exhibition by this brilliant West Indian cricketer, Vivian Richards. I said, we'll make them grovel. Oh, that has chased me all over the world, and I deserve it, deserve it for sure, because it's, uh, it was a very inappropriate word to use. And of course, the West Indians then went about showing me how inappropriate it was. And um, the likes of Michael Holding in particular, uh, Clive Lloyd and others, I mean, they, they let me have it, Viv, all of them. They let me have it verbally in every which way. Vivian Richards uh, will always be remembered, certainly in England, for the effect he had on the 1976 series. He hit two double centuries in that series in 1976, 232 at uh, Trent Bridge in the first test of the summer, which really set the standard for the rest of the series, and also 291 at the Oval. Well, that's four more. That is a super shot. Richards had an extraordinary eye and reflexes. He was able to dominate and intimidate opposition attacks. Vivian Richards just blasting away, showing utter arrogance. If you've got a batsman like Viv Richards, you, sure you've got a you've got a plan A, a B, a C, and a D, and you better be prepared to go through them all a few times. But he could ruin all your plans very quickly by the way he played and, and by the way he thought. I, I think the thing that sums up Viv Richards batting best is, is by one of the finest bowlers that played in his era, Imran Khan. And Imran Khan said, the only, um, the only batsman who ever intimidated me was Viv Richards. Very few batsmen uh, make as big a statement with their presence as Viv Richards. It looked like he had tennis balls under each arm as he walked out, you know, and he, he was always sweating when he came to the crease. But it was like, this is my stage. We might be, he might come to the wicket, it might be three for 30, but sorry, the rules are about to change on Viv. And, and that was the way he approached every innings that he played. Well, can you believe it? The West Indies poised on the brink of disaster. And what an arrogant shot played by the man it bounced back into the field of play 20 meters i don't think i've ever seen a batsman who went out to the middle with that kind of swagger and you almost could sense that the the bowlers and the opposition were shaking in their boots when he came out he had that presence lovely shot by richards picked it up beautifully just and he was a, a strong man hit the ball like thunder remarkable eyesight he picked it up so early, he picked the, the line and the length up so early, he, he automatically seemed to be in a position to play that attacking shot. Um, I think that's the hallmark of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the very greatest. If I were playing, picking a World eleven of all the great players that I've seen, uh, and in my time as a player and as an umpire, Viv would be my number three batsman without a shadow of doubt. 
He used to murder a tax. Once he got in, he'd murder a tax. Tremendous, gr wonderful eye. Uh, great player, man. Great player. I mean, he got to be one of the greatest uh, that's ever lived with. Tremendous. We're playing the West Indies at the Adelaide Oval in the 79-80 series. And Lenny Pascoe ran in and bowled three bounces in a row to Viv. And as Lenny was walking back, and it was six ball overs, as he was walking past the umpire, umpire Max O'Connell said, Len, that'll be enough for this over. And this voice came from the other end, don't stop him, Max. Arrogantly swatted away behind square for four runs. In 1969, the 17-year-old Richards was already a star attraction on his home island of Antigua. In 1972, Richards was playing first-class cricket for the Leeward Islands. He had a big influence on the smaller islands of the West Indies, who were outside the mainstream up until 1966. Viv started his test, his first class career in 1972. So it was only six years after the Windwards, who were um, St. Lucia, St. Saint, um, Saint Vincent, Dominica, Grenada, and his own home island, Antigua, St. Kitts, the small islands, were brought in. And all of a sudden they had this star. So that made the small islands lift everyone there, uh, gave them a tremendous boost of confidence. In 1973, he was playing county cricket for Somerset alongside Ian Botham. The Somerset meant everything to him. That was his first big chance, as it was with me. Uh, so he, it meant a great deal to him. And we, we learned a lot. We learned about life together. We learned to, uh, well, we didn't learn about much about cooking. But, you know, we learned about most things together. And um, I was privileged and lucky enough to grow. And the two of us grew together. But to grow up, it was, it was absolutely magnificent to watch his career going. And I would take as much interest in what he was doing as he would in what I was doing. First time I played against Viv Richards, he was playing for, I think, the President's Eleven at Montego Bay. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we didn't know who this guy was apart from the name Richards on the, on the scoreboard. Jeff Hammond was bowling, no slouch, lively, could swing the ball out. And suddenly, bang, 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 three balls in a row, straight back over his head for four, very early in his innings. And then he's nicked one and caught behind, I think, something like that, from a good outswing. We've all gathered around and we're congratulating uh, Bomber, as we used to call him, Bomber Hammond, um, on a good piece of bowling. And Bomber just shook his head and he said, oh, you, you, you can't keep batting like that and getting away with it. And what we were to find out in later years was that uh, Viv could keep batting like that and, and getting away with it. Three future great West Indian players made their test taboos in 1974. Andy Roberts, Gordon Greenwich and Viv Richards. He did come along at a time when the West Indies were all powerful. Um, the 1974-75 tour of India was his first, was Gordon Greenwich's first, first for Clive Lloyd as captain and uh, they all gelled together of course. And felt confident, they were all confident, they felt they could do anything and uh, I think Viv's whole attitude rubbed off on the rest of the team. In his first test match against India, Richard struggled with the fast leg spin of Bhagwat Chandrasekhar. He made amends in the second, scoring 192 not out. In the inaugural World Cup final at Lords in 1975, Viv Richards failed with the bat, but he still had a profound effect on the game. Oh, and this must be a run out here. He must be out. In an era when fielding standards reached new heights, Richards was supreme. In that 1975 World Cup final, Australia v. Uh, uh, West Indies, he turned the match with his brilliant fielding. I mean, I think it was only his first, I think it could have been only his second match for the West Indies. And his fielding in the mid-wicket areas and the cover point areas was was uh, outstanding. And he, he ran three of the Australian batsmen out when they were really set and they were going. And I think if he hadn't run them out, I think Australia would have won it. It's just the speed with which he moved in comparison with what we had in those days. I mean, I guess now with modern one-day cricket, he probably wouldn't have been that remarkable. But it was just 
you know, the man for the occasion, here it was, it was the final, West Indies got the better of it, and probably one of the key things was, was these three key runouts. The 1975 76 tour of Australia began badly for Richards. He failed to reach 50 in any of the first four tests. His place on the team was in jeopardy. Opening the batting for the last two tests and facing Lilly and Thompson, Richards made 30, 101, 50 and 98. His ability to take on new ball bowlers was recognised and his place assured. When uh, Viv Richards hit the ball, there was a different sound to it, had a different energy. He was just something special. He's the godfather of one-day cricket. He's the one that invented the going down the pitch and the backing way, hitting over extra and doing all this weird and wonderful stuff, you know. He did stuff that great players dreamt of. God, I wish he played for Australia. Oh, over those years. But Sir Vivian Richards, they don't make him any better. Viv Richards, all I'm grateful for is that I didn't have to bowl to him. The contempt he, he sort of gave to, to bowl was, you know, like everybody's walking out with helmets on and armour over the arm and rib cage protection. Viv used to walk out and you knew full well that you could see the brown skin through the shirt. You could see the cap at a rakish angle on the head and say, well, come on, you serve it up to me, mate. I'm ready for you. Short ball straight away and Richards confidently smashes it to the boundary. Oh, is he looking dangerous? After a successful tour against India at home, Richards arrived in England in 1976, confident in his ability to dominate any attack. Despite missing the second test with influenza, Richards made 829 runs at an average of more than 118 as the West Indies completed a dominant 3-0 series win. Richards made 1,710 test runs in 1976. In an era of great fast bowlers, he was the batsman the quick men feared most of all. He was in a class by himself, Viv Richards. I think that um, he could well be termed the, the Muhammad Ali of cricket in the sense that um, he took on everyone. And he didn't just do it by the bat. He said it. He talked. And, you know, his bravado was rubbed off on many of the players that played with him. I was very lucky to be in a team like that and um, just learning from people like Viv. Well, he's the best batsman I ever bowled at. I think that goes uh, without question, really. Um, he had this aura about him. He, he dominated sides he dominated bowling attacks he, um, he had a swagger but it was a, a believable swagger there was no arrogance or uh, no real arrogance to it he was he was just uh, an unbelievable presence and certainly the hardest man I've ever had to bowl at in county or test match cricket because you just didn't know where you were gonna bowl the ball Richards has hit five boundaries from nine balls one of the fiercest competitors really I think um, I think a lot of opponents approach Viv from the wrong way. I think if you made Viv feel comfortable, you had a better chance. But the moment you confronted him, you're on the losing side. A tremendous batsman and, of course, a great competitor. Australia's new sensation after Lily and Thompson and those guys was Rodney Hogg. Had great pace. And Hoggy ran up and bowled his bounce at Viv at the MCG. And Viv hooked, was a bit late on the shot and got hit on his jaw. Viv used to bat with chewing gum those days. He used to bat and chew and... And when he got hit on his jaw, Rodney Hogg is there almost looking at him to say, isn't he going off, isn't he going off? And Bib didn't go off, of course. And after a few minutes, Bib settled down again. And Hoggy thought to himself, hey, this, that didn't send him off. I really send him off now and charged in and bowled this other bouncer at Bib. But obviously Bib must have been waiting on this bouncer. And although it might have been quicker than the previous one, it went out of the ground. And the MCG is a big ground. And Bib hit it hard and far. In the 1979 World Cup final at Lords, Richards made 138 not out from 157 balls, the first in a long list of match-winning one-day international knocks. I umpired, of course, three World Cup finals that he played in, and the, oh, yeah, tremendous one-day cricketer, marvellous. Uh, it, it just changed the game completely. 
once he got in, he just changed the game. He, it's, uh, it, it, it could, well, you couldn't ball at him. Wherever you ball at, at him, he just oh, he murdered you. Vim's presence, I think, came from the way that he strode to the crease. You know, he, he strode to the crease and you, if you were sort of silly enough to look at him, you would think, oh, this guy means business. Um, and Viv quite often would, he, he'd stride to the crease, he'd take block, and then he used to sort of have this habit of banging the, 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 the grip on the top of his handle. And, it was, and then he, you know, very firmly tapped the bat. You know, everything about him was, you know, I've come here to get you and uh, you better be at your best, otherwise I'm going to get you. So that was, it, it was an intimidating uh, presence. If you, if you allowed yourself to be intimidated, Viv, you know, was on top of you straight away. And there's no contest with that one. That is a big six. Viv Richards, uh, well, he's probably my favorite cricketer. In a one-day game at the MCG, we had an attack that included Lily Thompson, I think Jeff Dimmitt was playing, Rodney Hogg, pretty formidable pace attack. And Viv made 150 in this uh, one-day innings and he just bludgeoned it and smashed it and whacked it to all parts of the, the MCG. And you can imagine in a one-day game, you've basically got the field pretty much spread when he's on strike. And he still managed to hit boundary after boundary after boundary. And at the time, I never thought anyone would bat better than that. In 1981, Test cricket came to Antigua, Richard's home island. He had married three days earlier, a major event for the island. Anything less than a century now would be an anticlimax. In 1981, Antigua was awarded a test match, the final test of the um, series against England. And Richard's actually got married just before that test, and of course that was a very major event on the island. And then he came out in the test match, then came out in the test match, and set about scoring a test century there and he took much longer than he normally would over a test century but it was if he said himself that the whole event wouldn't be complete unless he was able to score a hundred which he, he surely did. By 1985 Richards had taken over from Clive Lloyd as West Indian captain. He would lead the team for six years and would never lose a series. I think Bib, when he was growing up as a young man his father told him Viv, you might be from a small island, but you're a big man. And you're going to prove to the world that you are a big man. And Viv went out to the world and proved that. Competitive to the point where if things weren't going right on a cricket field, he would almost lose his cool because he was so competitive. But fortunately for us and the West Indies, we won a lot when Viv was in the team. So he was able to maintain his calm and his cool and just get his job done. But Talk about competitive, Viv Richards, highly competitive. Richards led his team to a 5-0 thrashing of England at home in 1986. He finished the series with a century and 56 balls, the fastest ever test century, as measured by the number of balls faced. And he's gone and got that century with a mighty six down to mid wicket. Typical stuff. The records kept falling. In a one-day international against New Zealand in 1987, Richards became the only player to make a century and take five wickets in a one-day international. And there is five wickets for Vivian Richards. What a day it's been for the West Indies captain. Richards continued in international cricket until 1991 and in county cricket until 1993. He was later knighted, the first Antiguan to receive a knighthood for services to cricket. Bib Richards was a very competitive man, not just in cricket. He did a little bit of boxing before he, before he became known as a great cricketer. He was very competitive in that as a footballer, very competitive. And of course, on the cricket field, playing with the West Indies, highly competitive and a very proud man of himself, his nation, and of course, the region. He came in to an outstanding West Indies team under Clive Lloyd, and um, he had 
Gordon Greenwich and, and Desmond Haynes opening the batting in front of him and others around him. Um, but he was the key. He was the, the, the hub around which the batting revolved during his career and during that long period when West Indies dominated international cricket. He was, you know, he, he was a great inspiration to, to all, young and old. And um, he, you know, he, he gave 120%, 30%, 130%. He just gave his all every time he went out there. I remember him taking it. He had a um, sort of back problem in Trinidad and the doctor gave him some cortisone and so on. He could, could hardly walk. And he went out, he took the injection, went out and bat. And that's how much he loved West Indies cricket and he loved this game of ours. So, you know, he, he was just a great ambassador for the sport. Many great batsmen have seemed like ordinary men until they took guard and began to ply their trade. Richards was different. He had an aura, a swagger that made it clear he was special, even as he sauntered to the crease. He was the man, and he, he had that. He was known as Smoking Joe Frazier um, because of his similarity in build to the former heavyweight boxer, even from a young age uh, when he first came into the team. And that's the kind of dominance that he had. That, that was the kind of attitude of a heavyweight boxer that uh, I'm coming to get you. No matter what happens, who I don't mind how fast you are, how much you spin the ball, no matter what kind of conditions they are, I'm coming to get you. When he walked out, you, you had a, a feeling, a presence was there when Richards went out, and usually he converted. Cool. Until you see him bat, really, and then he explodes. I mean, you just know that watching him bat, he, he tries to give you this cool image of totally in charge all the time, but you can see that he really wants to give it such a belting and uh, that's the that one millisecond that he that he changes from being a you know very cool customer to um to just letting everything out bib richard saw himself as an entertainer when bib richard got a hundred he didn't say to himself on too many occasions i'm gonna make this a double or i'm gonna make this a triple he thought with the dress in this team that he was in when we got the 300 odd runs or over 300, that was a lot of runs for us with the bowling attack that we had. So there was no point in him sitting down and taking a new guard and talking up. He just started playing a few shots. Many times we would get 100, 130, 140, he's, he's out. And the bowlers on the opposition team would breathe a sigh of relief to say, OK, he thinks he has had enough, great, let him go. Bib was just there to entertain. Sir Vivian Richards played in 121 test matches. He made 8,540 runs at an average of 50.23, including 24 centuries. In one day internationals, he made 6,721 runs at an average of 47, with 11 centuries, and 118 wickets at an average of 35.83. History will judge him as a great player. No two ways about it because people would have seen him on, on video. People would have seen the shots that he played and seen him destroy bowling attacks. But at the same time, a few people might doubt why didn't he get bigger, bigger, bigger runs? Why didn't he get doubles and, and triples? All I can say to them is he didn't get them because they weren't necessary. Biff would have just given enormous pride to, 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 the, to the Caribbean islands and especially the island he was from Antigua. Um, gave them real, real strength. I, I, you know, I think everybody in the West Indies and the Caribbean were, were proud of, of, of that West Indian side. They were the best team in the world. They took some serious de demantling as well, didn't they? I mean, they, they, they ruled the world for a long time. Viv Richards made batting look so simple. Viv Richards was, uh, was somebody who, who, when he went out to bat, you knew that you could, uh, you, you could, you Richards would be entertained. Uh, he would play his shots no matter what the uh, position of his team and he was uh, he was explosive it was unbelievable his record speaks for himself it was great to have him in, in 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 the side because you know you knew you had somebody there who regardless of the situation could bring you back into the game he was so uh, important i think for my career and i'd like to think i was for his to a degree uh, even when I was captain of England in the West Indies and we had all kinds of problems, he would take the time out to come and see me and sit me down and make sure it was all right and think of anything he could do. And, and also, best player, in my opinion, that's ever lived. Sir Vivian Richards, like Grace, almost a century earlier, had a unique and commanding presence on the cricket field. 
For this and for his ability to produce astonishingly powerful innings and demoralize the finest bowling attacks, Sir Vivian Richards ranks among ESPN's Legends of Cricket.